at Global Evangelistic Ministries. Welcome to our time of worship. And if you know the songs, please join us in singing them. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. No 
turning back. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Amen. Amen. I've decided to follow Jesus. And because of that decision, there is no turning back. I'm going to find myself not turning back, but I'm going to find myself pursuing and going forward in the things of God. Even though I thank you all for this afternoon for joining us at this time of worship. And we want to actually just go into a time of prayer and just give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for what he has done thus far. Listen, we've made it to New Year. Amen. And I'm so excited about it. Um, amen. And I'm going to tell you how my challenge is going even after my prayer. Amen. I'm going to tell you about how my challenge is going. Amen. That I put out and I'm actually doing myself. Heavenly Father, we come before you now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, we come before you, Lord God. Because you are able, you are capable, Father God. You are willing, Lord God, and you are ready, O oh God, to meet our needs, oh God. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that though we see things going on in the world around us, Lord God, we can decide to follow Jesus and know, Lord God, that we do not have to turn back, Lord God. Oh God, though none go with me, Lord God, still we will follow, oh God, with no turning back, oh God. God, with all the things that we're experiencing now at this time, Father God, in life, the things that we are seeing that are taking place, the things that cause us fear, Lord God, the things that cause us to tremble, the things that cause us, Lord God, to be uncertain and unclear. And God, we recognize, Lord God, that we can trust you, oh God, and therefore we'll continue to follow, Lord God, and we will find ourselves no turning back, oh God. God, we say thank you right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you're completely, utterly, without any, uh, 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 any competition, Father God, in control of this world, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, without any, uh, um, you're undisputedly the champion of our lives, Father God. God, we come before you now saying thank you, Lord Jesus. God, that we're going to follow you with all our hearts, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all our faith, with all our knowledge, with all our talents, with all our gifts, with all we have, oh God, and not turn back, oh God. God, though trouble seems to be growing, oh God, though situation seems to be arising, oh God, though sickness seems to be overtaking, Father God, we will not turn back, oh God. We can't go back, oh God. We will not go back, Father God. God, we set our hearts and our minds, our focus, our attention on you, Lord God. There is no going back, oh God. There is no turning around, oh God. God, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your people, oh God. I thank you for those that are learning to know you, Lord God. I thank you that are just getting to know you, Father God. Oh God, that as they come to accept you, Lord God, God, that they will commit within themselves, Lord, that there is no turning back. They will not walk away. Oh, God, they will not put down their cross, Lord God. They will not lay their Bibles to the side, Lord God. Oh, God, that no, though none go with them, Father God, still they will follow, oh God, and they will not turn back, oh God. God, we need you, God, now as never before. Oh, God, there's so many things going on, Father. Oh, God, there's memories of past uh, situations that have taken taken place, Lord. Oh God, there are there are there are reminders, Lord Jesus, of past events, Lord God, that have brought about pain and shame. Oh God, and even now, Lord God, there are sickness, Lord God, that seems to be roaming, Lord God, out of control, Father. Oh God, but though all these things seem to be having their way, oh God, we recognize that God just steal the way, oh God. Though these things seem to be actually increasing in strength and might and power, oh God, we recognize that you're still in control, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, and our mind will not be changed. Oh God, it's settled in heaven. It's settled here on earth. It's settled in my life. Oh, there is no turning back, oh God. No turning back. No turning back. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Even now, what I've what I've seen is, is that literally uh, for whoever's taking the challenge with me, listen, I, I said I had a challenge that within the next three weeks that I was going to ask within three weeks, I was going to try to listen to the entire Bible within 21 days. I was going to try to listen to the entire Bible. I was going to listen to it on audio and go through it. And within that time frame, within those 21 days, literally it, it came out to being that I needed to read. I needed to listen to at least close to 60 
chapters a day. Amen. So I told you I was going to give you a report on how I'm doing on my challenge. Amen. Amen. I am pressing on. Amen. Literally right now at this point in time, I'm at least about 200, uh, a little bit over 200 chapters in of listening to the scriptures. Amen. And I'm just listening to them and listening to them, listening to them. And if you did the math, you say that's only so many days. But what's happening is, is that I've been actually taking in God's word and it has been, it is like, if you want to go back to school, amen, if you want to actually do some things and learn some things about God, amen, you sit down and you set your heart to actually listen to about 60 chapters a day and you're going to get you some education, amen, you're going to get you some education in the word of God and so I've been learning the discipline, I've been learning to go through and I've been experiencing greatness, I've heard things, I've seen things, I've came to understand things that I had not seen before and so I want to encourage whoever's willing to jump in and you say, well, well, I might not be able to get the whole Bible, but I can try to get at least a, a, a quarter of it. Then I say, go for it. Try to get uh, at least, as much as you can. Amen. Take it in and allow God's word to begin to work on your life. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing it out there again that within 21 days, I'm trying to listen to the entire Bible. Amen. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to keep you updated on what's going on, how it's working. But right now, what's happening is, is that it has been a blessing to me. It is, it is challenging. Amen. It is challenging. Amen. I have to, I think I'm a, I, I know I'm a couple of chapters behind. Amen. But what I want to encourage you to do that it is doable. Amen. And so I want to encourage you all to do it and try it. Do as much as you can. Amen. Do according to what you can do. Amen. But set your heart. Amen. And one of the things that I found is, is that we're listening to, when you're doing something of that magnitude of trying to listen to 60 chapters a day, I cannot start in the afternoon or late in the night and try to listen to all 60 chapters because it's not going to work. I really need to start it throughout my day. I need to start in the morning. Start listening in the morning. And then I need to listen in the afternoon. And then I need to listen in the nighttime. Because I still have responsibilities with family and other things that are going on. And so I actually separate it and break it up throughout the day so I can actually do it. So that might be a hint for those that are deciding to do it and want to do it. Uh, but please do as much as you can. Amen. And if you want to you say, well, I'm going to read past. I'm going to take the challenge. And I'm going to see how much of the Bible. You know, I might not be able to do the entire Bible. I may not be able to do as much as that, but let me see how much of the Bible I can read within the next at least, let's say, 15 days. Let's see how much you can read within the next 15 days and see what exactly God does in your life and see the growth and the spiritual enhancement that he'll give you. I think you're going to appreciate it. Amen. Just just do as you go at your pace. Amen. But but do something. Amen. Don't do nothing. Amen. Allow God's word to begin to speak to your life in Jesus name. Amen. I had, I had a question, um, you know, and I love starting out with questions, but I had a question. Have you ever been troubled by those things going on around you? Su such to the point that literally uh, when you look at them, they seem so big that it seems like there's no hope. I don't know how to fix this and I can't fix it and I don't know what to do about it. And so therefore, what do I do? Sometimes the, the goal, I mean, it's not, not the goal, but sometimes what we can do is we can actually put ourselves in a position when we see situations like that and just say, basically, there's nothing I can do. Uh, we, we can uh, to do nothing is actually doing something, because sometimes what we can do is we can find ourselves putting ourselves in a position where do we just ignore them? Nor what's taking place around us and what's going on and how things are going or or do we just pretend that it's OK and and things are not happening the way that they are or. What can we do about these situations that are taking place? The problem with these situations is that oftentimes when these types of problems arise, they seem larger than life. And they seem so big that literally there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Uh, you, you, you recognize that there are some things that, that you just say that that's beyond my pay grade. That's uh, something that I, I have no control over. Uh, that's not me. That has nothing to do with me or possibly if it affects me, then I'm going to have to deal with it. But until then, I'm going to just wait. Well, I, I want to talk to you today about a prophet. Amen. In the Bible, literally. And, and what he did was is that he had a problem. Amen. Because what he did was he had become troubled by what he was seeing going on around him. I mean, his mind was uh, troubled in so many different ways. He was vexed and he was he was he, he just did not like it. And what he decided to do about the trouble that he saw going on around him was he decided that uh, I'm going to take it to God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk to God about it. Like I, I, I'm not talking about him talking about his family members. I'm not talking 
about him talking about those, his, his close friends. Uh, but he, he actually was looking at society around him. He was looking at everything that was going on around him. And now he was actually coming to a place to say, like, God, why is this stuff going on? Uh, literally, I, I, I'm, I'm coming to say today uh, uh, that there have many, been many times where they say you don't ask God why. Um, please forgive me for those that I'm about to offend, but I don't believe that. I believe that we can ask God the tough questions. I believe we can ask God about those things that we do not understand. I believe that we can ask God, and I also am under the impression that God will answer. I'm under the, the, the mindset that God will answer if we begin to ask him the hard questions about hard things going on in life. And especially those things that are going on around us. Amen. And so there was a prophet that what he did was is he began to ask God the hard questions. Now, if you would go with me to the book of Habakkuk. Amen. Habakkuk is H-A-B-A-K-K-U-K. -K -K. Amen. If you could go with me to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk was the prophet that began to ask God these questions. Amen. And I'm going to read a very familiar passage of scripture in your ear. Uh, but, but I'm going to read it. And for those that have not heard it, then praise the Lord. This is going to be something new that we're, that we're sharing today. But if we could go to Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Now it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Now that was Habakkuk. Actually a state, making a statement of what he's going to do. He said, I'm, I'm going to stand upon my watch. I'm going to set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Uh, verse two. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Verse 3, for the vision is yet for a point in time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Verse 4, but his soul which is lifted up is not a right to him, but the just shall live. By faith. Amen. amen. What a famous statement. Amen. What a famous statement. Now what we begin to see about Habakkuk is that literally he was troubled. He was vexed by everything that was going on around him. Literally he, he, he was in Judah. And in Judah it seemed like the wicked, they were actually prospering. They were actually doing well. Those that meant no good, they were actually finding success in doing wrong. And, and so now he's asking God, why is this so? Habakkuk, he's, he's considered one of the, uh, so if I could give you a little background about him, he's considered one of the Old Testament minor prophets. Hey Amen. Why they call him minor or major, I just, just don't know. But he was one of, considered one of the uh, minor prophets. Uh, it is a small book. This book in itself is a small book. It consists of uh, three chapters. This book is an oracle, a dialogue between the prophet and and God. This is a conversation where he's having between him and God and God and him and they're talking about some matters, amen, concerning Habakkuk. These are the things that that, uh, that, that Habakkuk was, was dealing with and so he decided that he would talk to God about them. Amen. He didn't go to his, 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 his uh, best friend. He didn't go to his peer, but he said I'm going to go to God about these things in which I question and what, what they actually how they how they uh, how they relate to me, yes. and so what we see in the book of Habakkuk is that it is a question and answer, so to speak, where Habakkuk is asking God about his decisions. One of the decisions that God had made in this book is is that God had decided to use the wicked as a 
paddle of correction towards those that were doing wrong. What we find is, is Habakkuk is complaining in the first and second chapter, and in the third chapter, he actually ends off with a prayer Amen. in the form of a song. Amen. What we begin to see is Habakkuk, the man of God, he only asked two questions. And in this book, God only gives two answers. It is a conversation of the most importance to the prophet as described in verse 2-1. Because what he says is, he says, I'm going to, in verse 2, 1, and he says, I'm going to stand here on my watch. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to stand here upon my watch, and I'm going to set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Now, now, what you got to understand is, is that the watchtowers, these, they were watchtowers that were actually built. The purpose of these watchtowers were for when they, they, they were built in order that, that uh, a watchman could actually stand up there and, and they could see for long distances and possibly see if the enemy was coming to actually do harm to those that were actually uh, uh, supposed to be in safety. But also watchtowers were actually placed in vineyards. Where they would grow grapes and things of that nature and, and the, the, the vineyard watcher would actually stand on the watchtower to watch to make sure that, that, that little critters wouldn't come in and destroy the vine or to make sure that thieves and robbers wouldn't come in and take what they shouldn't have taken. Now, this is what Habakkuk is saying. He said, I'm asking God a question and I'm going to stand on my watchtower. <laughs> And wait to see what God is going to say. Amen. He says, I will stand upon my watch and set upon the tower and will watch to see what he shall say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Yes. Amen. Amen. So now he finds himself in this place where he's he's watching to see what God is going to say. And, 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 and so we see this and then what we recognize is that this entire book. It really leads to us getting back to the statement that, that was stated uh, at the end of verse 4 is, man shall live by faith. Amen. Uh, what we see is, is that, that, that uh, we are to trust God no matter what may happen in life. We are to thank him for the good and, and, and we're to thank him that he's in control of the bad. That he knows how to work the bad out. To make it good at the end. Amen. We are to know that no matter how dark the day, the hour may become, our hope still comes from the Lord. Yes. We are to, we are to, we see one of the things that we got to recognize is, is that as we are those that find ourselves seeking the Lord, as, as those that would find ourselves desiring to do what it is that God has called us to do, that we are God's handiwork. And no, and, and I want to talk to you about uh, a contractor. I, 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 any contractor that is a real contractor, he does not go into a situation where something is nicely built, something put together in order, and tear it down just for fun. He he only the only time that a contractor will actually go into a situation where something is nicely big, built and the structure is nicely framed and tear it down it will be because of the fact that he wants to build something better. He wants to build something greater. He wants to build something that he actually later on can find himself pleased in because it will actually be the best structure. Sometimes we actually have found ourselves in homes where literally some things are outdated. The walls are still good. The floor is still well. Even it seems like the structure of the, where, where the placement of the beams are, they're still working after so many years. Yes. But if you look at the electricity, you look at the wiring, you look at the inner workings of it, literally, it, it, it is something that you're going to have to actually go in and deal with if it's going to last even longer. So in those moments, sometimes the contractor has to go in, tear down in order to make things better. 
What we begin to see is that we are God's construction, amen, project. We are part of God's handiwork, and sometimes in order for us to become better, God has to go in and tear down some things that may look perfectly normal, perfectly in good condition, but just so that he might make us better. Somebody say, make me better, Lord. See, we are to know that God has our best interest at heart. We, it, it, wait, I got to stop there. We have to know that God has our best interest at heart. I, I, I heard uh, prayers at times where people would begin to pray, Lord, what did I do, God? Why are you getting me, God? Why are you coming after me, God? God, why, why, why? I've heard uh, people uh, make statements along the lines that they would say that, that God is, is, is out to get them. Uh, for no particular reason, God, I've done right. I've done what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm trying to make things well. And, and sometimes we got to stop and just recognize that literally God has our best interest at heart. We're not saying that God brings the bad, but there has been times in the Bible where God has brought the bad. Amen. But, but so what happens is, is that if there is something that is going on in our lives and God has said that I'm about to tear this down, but you love it so much, you think it's just what it's supposed to be. It's just right for you. If, if it was your choice, we would not tear it down. And God says he wants to tear it down. Then you must know that God has your best interest at heart. Amen. Amen. I was in a project. Amen. I, I've been on a project or I've been I've been working a uh, 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 area of life. I've been working in a field of business for the last five years. And even now, uh, at this time, when when it comes to actually saying that that we're about to close the business, it's not going to work no more. We're not going to do it no more. That's the end of that. Uh, God, I've learned so many things. I've, I've experienced so many things. I've, I've had so many good days and I've had bad days and, 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 and somebody even asked me they said well you put a lot of time into that you must really love it and I, I said do I love it maybe I do love it I, after a while sometimes you can do something for so long that it actually becomes a part of you and it, it causes you to it, it's part of what you are and, and now at the time when God says that's the end of that chapter sometimes we can actually resist we can actually begin to put ourselves in a position that we don't want it to go. We can actually begin to set up walls and things to say that we're not going to allow it to get away. Amen. Why? Because it's a part of us now. It's part of the nature. It's a, but part of life, what God does in life is, is there is an opening of chapters and there is a closing of another chapter in order to get to the next chapter. Amen. Uh, when you read a book, you do not expect the whole book to be chapter one. You're expecting that you're going to read chapter one and chapter one is going to make the point that needs to be said, needs to be done, and then we're going to open up chapter 2. And after we read chapter 2, we're expected to come to another place where we find ourselves opening and closing chapters in life that we might find ourselves, but the book is not over, right? Because the writer, the author, he's still putting things down. He's still putting things in place. He's still organizing. He's still constructing that we might find ourselves doing what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. What they found themselves doing at this time was is that there was something that God was about to shut down. There were some things that were going on that, that literally they had found themselves sinning. Judah sinning. Amen. I'm, wait, Judah sinning. Don't Judah means praise? Judah means praise. The, the praisers were sinning. Amen. Wait a minute. Now, how we get that? In? How does that work? The, they were in, the people in Judah were acting. Wicked. There was evilness that was increasing in Judah. Now, uh, 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 the, the prophet Habakkuk, he's sitting here and he's looking at what is going on around him. And he's, 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 he's wondering, God, what is really going on? How could this be? Because now I'm watching sin increase. I'm watching wickedness increase. I'm watching evil increase in this holy city. How could this be, Lord? 
And now what he does is instead of keeping it to himself, because he can't keep it to himself, literally, he's so troubled by it. And I, I, I want to encourage us that when we find ourselves troubled with dilemmas and situations and circumstances, when we find ourselves under siege of problems, and, and literally it seems like our problems got us captive, held hostage and we can't get out. I want to encourage somebody, instead of saying, I quit, I surrender, I, I, I'm just going to let whatever happen, happen. No, I'm going to encourage you to actually find yourself going to the Almighty God and asking Him, Lord, what can I do at this time? God, what should be taking place at this time? And how can we handle this situation? Somebody said, make me better, Lord. Oh, that's all we want to be. We want to be better. Is that all right? We want to be better. Amen. And so what we begin to see is that Habakkuk, what he does is he recognizes that, that we are the handiwork of the, the, ma the master contractor. And he's building a great building. And he's about to tear down some things that do not belong to us. Amen. Some of the stuff in your life, it don't belong to you. Some of the trouble in your life, it don't belong to you. Some of the things that you're going through right now, it don't belong to you. Because why? We've been built up to actually be the righteousness of God. We're to be the light of the world. We're to be those that the world can see and know that we're good. But there's still some old stuff Amen. that needs to be dealt with. Amen. Yeah. And it don't belong to me. Yeah. And God, you can have it. Make me better. I want to be better. Do it, Lord. Yeah. We're to believe and know that, 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 that God has interest at heart. We're to believe beyond what we see and know that God is in control of what we see and what we cannot see. Uh, we are to trust the Lord with our lives. Amen? Oh, when we say this in this prayer, we're really breaking it down to say, Lord, I trust you with my life. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Oh, God, and I know where I am. Save me. I trust you with my life. Lord, take me out of where I am. Lord, bring me where I need to be, Lord God. I'm going to trust you with my life. I don't want to remain this way. Oh God, I know. And literally, this is the part about it. You don't need nobody to tell you what you're doing wrong. You don't need nobody to come and tell you what ain't right in your life. You don't need nobody to come and explain to you how you mess up and you oops over and over again. Literally, you don't need nobody to come and help you to understand those things. And so therefore, when those things are going on, when, when it seems as we're praying about things and they just won't go away. Amen. Oh, we're praying about things and it seems like they just won't go away. Oh, addictions. We're praying for the addiction and it's been a long time and it just won't go away. We're praying for relationships. God, my heart is tied up. Oh God, and they tied up with me. And somehow every time I'm trying to get away, they keep pulling me back. Oh God, we just won't go away. God, we're saying, Lord, we need you, oh God. Oh God, to help us get out of this. Oh God, we want to get out of here. We don't want to remain in the same place, in the same state that we're in. We need you, Lord. Work on us. Help us, God. Oh God, I come to you. Listen, I, I want to encourage you when you begin to pray about things that if you've gone through for some years, some have, some have found themselves in situations for 15 years. Some have found themselves in situations for 60 years. Some have found themselves in situations for 30 years. Some of us found ourselves in situations for three years and two years and one year. And, and it just won't go away. Even though I prayed about it, somehow, even without my desire, it's still calling me. And I keep finding myself going. Well, God is going to come and he's going to tear down. Oh, those places, those things, those structures, those people, those relationships, those circumstances, those situations. Mm. Yes. They would take you away yes. from what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. And so what, what ends up happening is, is that uh, he, we, 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 he sees that, that our lives, they belong to the Lord. Yes. And he, can, he encourages us in chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. The just shall live by faith. We are to become irresponsive to our feelings. Amen. What does that mean, Pastor? Uh, literally, we're going to have to get over our feelings. Sometimes we feel shy. Sometimes we feel angry. Sometimes we feel happy. So we got to get past our feelings that we cannot just live by how we feel. If we live by how we feel, we would never get up to do anything that is very much productive. Because oftentimes when you're doing 
something that is powerful, that is mighty, and that's going to bring about greatness, that's going to bring about change, it doesn't always feel good. Amen. It doesn't always cause you to feel the way that you want to feel. And so we got to get past our feelings. And we got to walk by the decrees that God has spoken in his word. We got to actually walk. In, in order to walk by the decrees that God has spoken in his word, you got to know his word. If you don't know his word, how are you going to know his decrees? How are you going to know what God is saying if you don't know his word? And so therefore, you've got to find yourself putting yourself in a position and, saying, and making a decision. Let me tell you, the way that we do this is real easy. You make a decision. Yes. Oh, my daddy was talking to me about the other day. He told me the, the, the blessing of our goals. He said, he said, this is how you get a goal done. He says, you make a decision and you don't allow there to be any exceptions. There will be no exception to the rule. There will be no, nothing that would come up that would actually change my mind. Amen. I've set my mind. I've set my heart that I'm going to go through the whole Bible in 21 days. Hallelujah. I'm going to go through it. And, and it's, guess what? There will be no exception to the rules. I might have to do some overnights. I might have to do some early mornings. I might have to do some afternoons. I might have to cut out something so I can listen to my Bible. But I've set my mind. I've set my heart. I've set my affections that there will be no exceptions yes. to the rule. Yes. Yes. Oh, and whatever it takes, God, I'm going to do. Yes. And God, at the end, all I want is you to be pleased with me. All I want is to be pleased with me. Your word tells me to study to show myself approved unto God that a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I can use some more word, Lord. I can, I can use some more of your language, God. I can hear some more of your verses, God. I can take in some more of your scriptures, God. Help me, Lord. I want to be better. And I pray in the midst of me listening to your word, God, you're going to tear down some walls. Amen. You're going to tear down some walls. Amen. You're going to tear down some walls. Lord, come in with your bulldozer. Oh, God, come in with your construction, uh, your construction equipment, Lord God. God, we need you right now, Lord God. Tear it down. Tear it down. We can't stay like this. Oh, no. We're going to get up out of here. Amen. Is that right? We're going to get up out of here. Those situations that cause us to not do and live as we should. See, uh, the prophet, he was troubled by what was taking place around him. And what he did was, is that he, he would bring, he decided within himself that he would bring his sorrows to God. Now I'm going to talk to you about three points and then I'm going to be done, right? I'm going to talk to you about Habakkuk's doubts, amen? This is my whole sermon here in, in a quick summary. I'm going to talk to you about Habakkuk's doubts. I'm going to talk to you about Habakkuk's God. Amen. And I'm going to talk to you about Habakkuk's hope. Amen. Doubts, God, and the hope that he had. Amen. What the first thing I'm going to talk about is that in Habakkuk 1, chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, what he does is the burden, what we see is that the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Amen. This is what it says. 1 1 says, the, the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. And then this is what he, he did in, in verse 2. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And will thou and thou wilt not hear? Amen. He found himself crying. He thought God wasn't listening. And even cry out unto thee of violence. And thou will not say, God, I'm telling you everything that's going on and you still not moving. Oh, he's questioning God's ways. Amen. Oh, he's questioning God's ways. Why doest thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? God, you got me grieving over here. For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore, verse 4, therefore the law is slack. Oh, the law ain't working like it's supposed to be. The law is not being enforced. And judgment do not go forth. Now here it goes. For the wicked doeth compass about the righteous. So what it is, is the wicked is actually surrounding the righteous. That there's more wicked than there is righteous in the city. And this is Judah. Judah. Praise. Yes. 
This is where the praise of the Lord is supposed to be going forth. And the wicked is surrounding the righteous. Then he goes on and he says, Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. Something got to be wrong, Lord. Something's got to be wrong with this picture. He's asking God, how long will you make me cry? How long will you allow me to grieve? How long will you allow me to watch these things? How long will this go like this? I'm here amongst those should, that should be praising God. But now the wicked have surrounded them. It's more wicked than it is just. The wicked in Judah were increasing Without punishment, that's what was happening. The wicked in Judah were increasing without punishment, and now he's sitting here looking, I am a man of God, I'm, I'm the prophet, I, I'm, I'm your spokesman, God, and, and if can't nobody talk to you, because you talk to me on a regular basis, if can't nobody talk to you, then I'm going to talk to you. What's going on? See, what, what, what Habakkuk could not comprehend was why or why not was God not doing anything about what he saw with his eyes. If he could see it with his eyes, he recognized that God definitely could see it with his eyes. If, I, if he could see the wickedness, it, it, it seemed to be increasing and things growing in the wrong way. How is it that God was not doing anything about it? Now, this was Habakkuk's doubt, right? He was doubting concerning what it is that God was going to do and how God was going to do what he was going to do. But then what we see is, is that God promised Habakkuk that the wicked would not go unpunished. Amen. This was God's promise to Habakkuk that the wicked will not go unpunished. But the Lord said, I'm going to use the Babylonians as my path of correction to punish Judah. Now, now, now that, that right there really sent Habakkuk uh, in, a, in a direction. Wait a minute, Lord. You about to use our enemy to spank your people? You about to use your you about to use the ones that we do not desire. You about to use the wicked to come in and actually handle your business. And and and, and Habakkuk, he began to ask, he began to question that. Now I gotta encourage somebody right now, and I'm gonna say it like this: note to self. Uh, think about that. Note to self. Uh, if we don't get anything else out of this lesson right now, note to self is God always wants us to come to him about our doubts. God always wants to come to him about our worries and God wants us to always come to him about our struggles. Amen. The only thing about that when we come to God about our questions, <laughs> oh, we don't always get the answer that we want. <laughs> It don't always turn out exactly like we would like it to be, amen? Oh, that God's answers may not be what you expected, amen? He, he may not say what you think, literally. That, 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 that he was saying, Lord, why are you allowing this to go on? Why are you not dealing with it? Why are you not handling it? And the Lord said, oh, don't worry, I'm going to punish him. But I'm going to use the enemy. <laughs> I'm going to use the enemy to get it done. See, one of the things about asking God questions when you do begin to ask God questions is, is that all of his answers may not come wrapped in a nice little boat. And so you better be ready for it. <laughs> oh, you can ask God the hard questions, but they may not always come with the solution that you want. Amen. You may be asking him about this and he'll tell you about your sin. You may be asking him about that and he may say, well, remember that. He, 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 may, he may have you to deal with you first before he actually gets to the answer. But what he's saying is, is that, listen, I got it. And that all God's answers may not come the way we desire them to be. 
So then what we begin to sing, see, see, one of the things that we're going to have to actually recognize if we're going to be those that are going to actually contend and do what God calls us to do, because I told you already that when you begin to set out to do something that's worth having, doing something that is worth uh, accomplishing, doing something that has never been done before in your life, literally it may, you got to get over your feelings because literally your feelings may not actually lead you where you're supposed to be going. And so like the songwriter sings, Trust and obey. Amen. There's no other way. Literally, that we're going to have to trust God. And trusting God is the only way. The only way we're going to get through it is that we're going to find ourselves trusting and obeying. Hallelujah. Amen. When we trust and obey, God will cause things to come to pass. Now, I, now, 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 I have a cook. He had been around God for some time, and he he had known him for some time, and and, and he had been he had been a, a spokesman for God. Amen. Yes. Now let's talk about Habakkuk's God. Uh, see, one of the things that about Habakkuk's God is is that uh, there's a word that they use uh, that that means that God is sovereign, and that He has sovereignty, which means that He's in total control. That means that there's nothing that goes on that does not go past his desk, literally. He knows everything that's taking place and how it's going on. And so now Habakkuk, uh, he, he's, he's coming before God and asking him, why are you not doing this and why is this not happening? He's questioning God's way of doing business. Amen. And God tells him, he says, oh, don't worry about that. I got them. I'm, I'm going to take care of the wicked. I'm going to punish them. But I'm going to use the enemy to actually take care of the wicked in Judah. Uh, but then he tells Habakkuk, oh, and, and, and by the way, don't worry about me using your enemy as my paddle because I'm going to punish them for punishing y'all at the end of the day. <laughs> All the law says, I'm going to use the wicked to handle the wicked. I'm going to going to make it work out. But don't you worry about them getting away with nothing either because I'm going to punish them at the end of the day for punishing my people. Amen. Uh, God said that he would use, He would also use the Babylonians, that he would also punish the Babylonians after they had fulfilled his purpose. That after he used them to actually uh, 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 to chastise those that were doing wrong, he said, I'm going to take care of them. Why? Now, now you say, why would God do that? Uh, well, let's go back to Habakkuk's God. Amen. Uh, remember I talked to you about the sovereignty of God, that, that God would say that I'm going to actually punish those that you're concerned about, Habakkuk. Don't worry about it. They're going to be punished. But on the other hand, I'm going to actually use the enemy, the Babylonians, to actually punish them, Habakkuk. But one thing you must understand about this whole situation, about this whole scenario of Habakkuk asking questions about God's way of doing things and how God does business is, is that God is still in control. I, I don't care what you go through. I don't care what you face. And I don't care what the limit you, that is going on in your life. God will make a way. God is in control. And though it seems that the world is out of control. Though it seems that sin is out of control. Though it seems that the COVID-19 and the, the variant viruses are out of control. I do not want you to miss the point or miss the fact that God does not overlook anything. God does not allow things to slide. That God will handle his business at the end. Because God is in control. Amen. Now finally, before we close, I'm going to talk to you about Habakkuk's hope. Now, Habakkuk, he finds himself that, that, that God is expressing to him that literally that I, I do what I want to do when I want to do it. I can handle it as I want to handle it. Uh, but this is your hope. This is what I, have you ever had an employee or you ever had somebody that you had to give instructions to? Have you ever had somebody that you had to explain something to when, when you shared it with them? At the end, they started asking you about something that had nothing to do with the instructions that you gave them. They were asking about other things. What about the front door? What about that? No, no, I gave you a instruction. I need you to do this, this, and this. And I need you to focus on this, this, and this, which are my instructions. Because if, you, if you're thinking about the wrong thing, you're not going to do my instructions. You're going to do the wrong thing, right? And so what ends up happening is that the Lord's answer to Habakkuk was an answer of encouragement to the prophet. 
Because Habakkuk was asking God about how he handled business, how he handled the, 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 the assignments and, and the files that came across God's desk. And what we begin to see is that the Lord, he began to encourage him in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Now we recognize that Habakkuk, he talks about that he's going to stand on his watch and he's going to wait uh, upon the tower to watch to see what the Lord is going to share with him, right? We talked about that already. And what the Lord is going to answer me. But this is the Lord's answer to Habakkuk, an uh, answer of encouragement to Habakkuk. Like, though you see all these things and though I tell you that I'm going to actually cause the enemy to actually correct my people and then I'm going to correct the enemy at the end of it. This is what I want you to be thinking about. These are my instructions to you. Amen. And I believe that we can take these instructions and we can utilize them for ourselves. We can actually be encouraged by them even today. They're still applicable. Amen. If I could build a bridge. Amen. This is where the bridge will come. Amen. Because you say you're talking about this old man from our old time, a different people, a different nation. And now this is where we find out how we can apply this to our lives. This is where the Lord, he begins to encourage Habakkuk. He tells him, he says, and the Lord answered me and said, now he, Habakkuk was waiting on his platform. He was going to stand on his, his, his soapbox, his, his pulpit. He was going to stand on his stage and he was going to wait to see what the Lord was going to answer him. And this is what the Lord had to say. He said, write the vision. He told him to write the vision. Sometimes what you need to do if you're going to find yourself getting out of what you've been going through, is you need to write a new vision. Sometimes the picture of what we've actually uh, seen in life has been the wrong picture. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Sometimes the picture that we've seen, for example, sometimes we can have a picture in our minds of family. And the picture that we've seen of family is a family that's fighting, fussing, and cussing. Oh, they hurting one another. They after one another. They getting one another. And literally, it is the wrong image. And now you're setting out to go have your own family. Well, the Lord says, before you set out to have your own family, I need you to do this. I need you to write the vision. I need you to write a new picture. I want you to write out what it is that you long to see. I want you to write out what it is that you desire that we might find ourselves where we're supposed to be. I need you to write the vision. He says, but now I don't, when you write this vision, listen, I, this is how I need you to write it. He goes on and tells me, he says, I need you to make it plain. On tablets. I need you to I need you to post it on the wall like pictures in your living room. I need everybody to be able to see it wide and clear what it is that you're talking about, that this is the direction that we're going in. I need it to be clear to be seen, and I don't need you to use jaw-breaking words. I don't need you to use vocabulary that others don't understand. I need you to use it that you're gonna make it simple and plain, uh, easy to be understood, easy to read, easy to comprehend. I need you to Write the vision, but when you write it, I need you to make it plain. And I need you to put it on top. I need you to put it somewhere where it can be visibly seen. I need you to put it somewhere where the world can see that this is the direction I'm going in. Yes. Put it on the tables. Yes. It, 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 so that, and, and, and this is the reason I need you to put it where it's visible. So when others come and they see it, they may grab it. Take it within themselves and what they're going to do with it, they're going to run with it. Yeah. When others see it, they're going to take it, they're going to understand it, and they're going to be able to run with it. Amen. This is what I need you to do. I need you to write the vision. I need, listen, man of God, you, you, you work, you're working on the church and things are not looking the way it's supposed to be looking. Things are not going the way it's supposed to be good. I need you to write the vision. And I need you to make it plain. And I need you to put it somewhere where everybody can see. Oh, 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 mama, 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 you, your, your babies, they ain't acting right. And they try to, you try to figure out what to do. And if only somebody was here to help me with these boys, if somebody was here to help me with these girls. Listen, mama, I need you to write the vision. I need you to make it plain. I need you to set it out. And mama, I need you to put it in action. I need you to put it in motion. Listen, and listen, this is your goal, mama. You're not going to allow there to be any exceptions. Or we going to, if, if you recognize that stand up late is the problem, we all going to bed early. Or oh, including me. Matter of fact, all the lights going off at a certain time, so we all be in bed. Amen. Literally, whatever it takes to put it in action and not allow there to be any exceptions for what it is that you're about to do. This is 
what I need you to do. I need you to write the vision. I need you to make it plain. And, and I need you to put it in a way that literally when others see it, they'll run with it. They'll know exactly what's going on. That you ain't got to explain it every time they read it. You ain't got to talk about it every time they read it. They'll look at it and know that that's what's going on. They'll look at it and say, yo, we don't do that here. This is how we do it. And they'll begin to show the vision that the others may run with it as well. Oh, for the vision, he tells them. For the vision that you write is, is, is yet. It's 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 yet for an appointed time. Oh, there's a time when you're going to be able to see what you've been praying for. There's going to be able to see what you've been asking God about. There's going to be a time when you're going to see what you wrote about. There's going to be a time that you're going to be able to see what you explained. Oh, it's for an appointed time. It's for an appointed time. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming right now. We got to write the vision. Sometimes we need to start having family meetings again. Sometimes we need to start sitting down and having dinner again. Sometimes we need to tell somebody else what our ideas are. Somebody that you can trust and, and, and work it out again. Oh, literally. Oh, because it's going to speak. Oh, it's going to speak. It's going to speak. Because he says, but at the end, it shall speak. Oh, when you see it happening, it's going to speak. And it will not lie. It will not lie. Amen. And, and, and then he tells him, he says, listen, this is your hope. Yes. Though it takes a while, though it tarry, yes. though it takes some time, yes. wait for it. Lord. Wait for it. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, you've been after this for some time now. You've been working on this for some time now. And you've experienced so many things over and over again. Trials and tribulations, upsets and downfalls. You've been trying to start that business. You've been trying to write that book. You've been trying to put your stuff in order. Oh, you've been trying to graduate. Although it tarries, wait for it. Because it, it says it will surely come. And it won't wait. <laughs> it won't wait no more when the time comes. Oh, literally, when it's time to come to pass, that's what's going to happen. Now I got to encourage you. Another note to self. We got to remember this. Note to self, note to self, note to self. When stuff is going a certain way and things are not going the way that we think they should be going and we're asking God about why is he doing things the way that he's doing things. And uh, what God was saying in note to self is faith in God is all that Habakkuk needed to answer his questions. That if he would have just had faith in God, that's all he needed. Oh, that to know that God's intentions is, is the best intention. God has the best intentions for us. Oh, to know that God is in control and he's powerful and he's mighty. And to know that I am a child of God and that God, he's going to work things out on my behalf at the end, no matter what it looks like right now. This is just a moment. This is just a season. Oh, literally seasons come and seasons go. But if he would have just recognized that faith in God was all he needed to answer his questions, he might have saved the conversation. Oh, but we would have missed out on the beauty of three whole book, three whole chapters being written. Of a conversation between God and man and how God is easy, easily uh, to, to, uh, to, to communicate with. How God is able and willing to answer our questions. See, one of the things that we don't want to do in our notes of self is we don't want to question God's ways. Amen? Why? What we want to do is, we want to know. This, this is why they said don't ask God why. You, you get what I'm saying? I believe that you can ask God the hard questions and God will answer. But instead of asking God why, ask God what should I be doing? How can I get on board? Lord, how can I get in agreement? How can I get in alignment with what's going on? See, we know one thing for sure is that God has our best interests at heart, that God is in control of everything, that God, he has the best plan that can be. We know that God is just. Amen. And he don't let stuff slide. Amen. See, what we got to do is instead of asking God about his ways, 
We got to know by faith. Without a shadow of doubt that God is in control. We have to know within ourselves by faith that God has everything under his control. And now we're not asking why, 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 why me, Lord? But now we're, we're finding ourselves saying, God, I know your plans towards me are good and not, your thoughts towards me are good and not of evil. God, I know that you desire to bring me to an expected end. Oh, God, I know that I'm going to live and not die. This will not kill me. <laughs> oh, God, because why? Because I got stuff to do. Oh, God, I got places to go. I got things to say. I got things to see. Yes. Oh, yeah. I know, God, I know your thoughts towards me. Hallelujah. By faith, oh, God. Yes. God, and I'll serve you. Yes. I'll serve you, God. And so what we begin to see is, is that we recognize that, that God is in control of all things. And if we would recognize by faith and know that by faith he's in control, this is what God says in verse 4 in his answer to Habakkuk, chapter 2. In Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, this is what the Lord says. He says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Amen. But the just shall live by his faith. God has called us his people. He's called us his just. Which means that we're going to have to live to a standard that the world doesn't live by. And do you know what makes the Bible so troubling to the world? It's because God doesn't just impose his standard on the believers. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. <laughs> the gospel is for the whole world, not just a few. Now, you say, I, you believe what you believe. I believe what I believe. Uh, and and, and we're going to leave it at that. No, it don't even work like that no more. Amen. Because now what they're saying to us is, is that you believe what I believe. And you really can't believe what you believe. Because I don't like what you believe. Amen? Amen. See, what happens is, is that we have to actually recognize that God's standard, his word is for the entire world. It is not just for the church goers. It is not just for the church members. It is not just for the clergy. It's not just for the laity. It's, it's for the whole wide world. And this is why they killed Jesus. Amen. Because the gospel is for all men, all sinners, Amen. abusers. Oh yeah, it's for them. The just, the unjust, the strong, the weak, the challenged, the brilliant. The gospel is for all. The gospel is for the whole world. If you can get that in your mind that the gospel is for the whole world. Hey, listen, sometimes it's not just for the poor. Because usually when people get a little money, they actually start thinking about other things. Well, I don't know if I believe in Christ anymore. I, I think, oh, we, we, we can actually transcend to another person, place in the universe and, and we can find ourselves somewhere. No, 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 no. It is not just for the poor. It's not just for the poor. And you don't have to change your belief because you didn't get a little change in your pocket. Yes. Amen. The gospel is for the whole world. Yes. It's for all. That's what makes it so great. It's comprehensive. It, it actually is easily to be understood. It's, it's traveled through time. What do I mean? I mean, I mean, from the very first time that it was written, it's still moving. It's still active. It's still applicable to life every day because it was written by men. And I love the gospel because it shows their imperfections. Sometimes we think we have to be perfect to actually serve God, to stand in God's position, to actually walk with God. And God, it's, it, over and over again, I see in the Bible that he used imperfect families. 
We call them dysfunctional now, but I don't even know what dysfunctional is because if that be the case, we all dysfunctional. And, and so what happens is that he's using families and he's putting families together and they're acting like families and they're doing what families do and, and, and we're, 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 we're operating and functioning. The gospel's for the whole world. It's for the attic. It's for the doctor. It's for the therapist. It's for the client. The gospel is for all. And if we limit who gets the gospel, where the gospel goes, where the gospel should be, then we mess up. The gospel is for all. So even now, I know that under the sound of my voice, there are those that have not accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Listen, it's about filling up heaven. Yes. It's about heaven being full, amen? Now, literally, I went to the bank one day and I said, listen, how much money does it take to fill my account? The lady shook her head. She didn't, she, you know, she frowned and she shook her head. She said, I said, how much does it take to fill my account? She shook her head. She said, basically, the answer was, you can't fill your account. <laughs> All you can do is keep putting into it, keep depositing, it, and keep making advances into your account, and it can hold it. Well, if our goal is to fill up heaven, you cannot fill up heaven. And the only thing that we want to do is keep depositing into it, keep making advances, and keep sending souls. Those that will commit themselves to Christ, those that will come to know the Lord, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Oh, we want to fill up heaven. Amen. Oh, it's an oxymoron. It's one of those things that we're trying to figure out, but we can't figure it out. Literally right now, I believe that those that are under the sound of my voice, that even you, uh, you're sitting right now, where you're listening right now, the Lord, he desires to save you. Will you pray this prayer with me? I believe that when you pray this prayer, this is the beginning of your salvation. Amen. After you pray this prayer, you still going to need to be discipled. You're going to still need to read your word. You're going to still need to get around brothers and sisters in Christ that would cause you to grow in your faith. Because that's the only way we can live. The Bible says if it's not faith, it's sin. You are the just. And God's word said this morning, the just shall live by faith. Will you pray this prayer with me? I believe that when you pray this prayer, the Lord is going to turn your life around. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. Lord, save me. I receive my salvation. Now, now, in Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray another prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for those that just prayed that prayer, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that their lives are being forever changed, Lord. God, I pray that you would send help from the sanctuary, Lord. God, I pray that they would reach out to us and contact us and let us know where they are, what's going on, where, how things are going in their lives. Oh, God, I pray, Lord God, that we would actually be able to answer their questions, to walk with them in agreement, Lord Jesus. But God, beyond that, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that they would walk a life that is, that they would walk and live out a life that is pleasing before you for all the days of their life. We say thank you now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And listen, when, 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 when I, because I know you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that the angels of heaven rejoice. And what I say is, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All heaven rejoice. 
Amen. Listen, two things I want to encourage you to do. First thing I want to encourage you to do is I got to encourage you in this new year, 2022. You got to get you a Bible. Amen. Oh, you can't do it without a Bible. Amen. I want to encourage you to get you a book, a Bible. Amen. And actually take it into your possession. I want to encourage you either to download it or upload it and get it. And so you can listen to it. You can read it. You can watch it. Get your Bible. Because how can you know what God's word is saying if you don't know what his word says? Next, I want to encourage you. Don't do it by yourself. You don't have to do it alone. Amen. I'm expecting this year that we're going to have at least a thousand people coming to, to be a part of what we're doing. I want, I want a thousand people to be connected to what we're doing concerning the body of Christ online, in church, or how it works. I don't even care. I just want a thousand people to join us in actually walking with Christ together. Amen. Amen. And then finally, I want to encourage you. God is with you. God is for you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And for those that have joined us and actually been sharing with us uh, during these seasons of, uh, of us growing in faith, I say thank you in advance. Those that desire to give, whatever you give, we say thank you in advance. We praise God for it. You'll be able to see in the, uh, if you could go to our page, GEM. ChurchChicago.org, Global Evangelistic Ministries. You'll be able to find out how you might be able to give. You'll probably be able to see it in the in the uh, in the uh, the heading, Amen. At the end of the service, but I want to say God bless you and keep you. And may it continue to cause His face to shine upon you. Join us throughout the week. God bless you, Amen.